Laws. Wherever we go, it seems like we have laws, rules, and regulations to oversee just about everything. We don't always like these rules, since they often mean that someone is telling us what to do or keeping us from doing what we want. Yet to live in a civil society, we must have some rules to follow. We know it sucks, but it's definitely one way of keeping us in line, don't you think? But what are these laws? Where do they come from? What happens when we break them? These are questions that everybody asks. Laws are rules that bind all people living in a community. Laws protect our general safety and ensure our rights as citizens against abuses by other people, by organizations, and by the government itself. Because apparently these things do happen, which is why we have laws to help provide for the overall safety. So yes, rules are kind of made to keep us safe. Laws commonly refer to a system of rules created and enforced through social or governmental institutions to regulate behavior. But, unto this day, no one really has a precise definition of what a law is. Some people describe it as a science and the art of justice. Okay, so how are laws made, you may ask? Basically, a legislator or a lawmaker is a person who writes and passes laws, especially someone who is a member of the legislator. Legislators are usually politicians and are often elected by us. Every law goes through a process. Now, this part is kind of complicated, but it is important, so try not to doze off. State-enforced laws can be made by a group legislator or by a single legislator, resulting in statutes by the executive through decrees and regulations or established by judges through precedent, usually in common law jurisdictions. Private individuals like us may create legally binding contracts, including agreements that adopt alternative ways of resolving disputes to standard court litigation. The creation of laws themselves may be influenced by a constitution, written or tacit, and the rights encoded therein. The law shapes politics, economics, history, and society in various ways, and serves as a mediator of relations between people. So now that we've established what laws are, Imagine that you are a legislator and you get to make laws, pass them, and everyone has to obey. What would those laws be? Here are some of the interesting and potentially effective laws that people all over the world have voted for. Like always, let us know in the comments below what laws you would suggest that we didn't mention. Number one, freedom of religion worldwide. It's hard to believe, but freedom of religion is still not a law in the 21st century. We are already at a time where the world has grown more inclusive and fair as time goes by. However, a lot of discrimination still roots from a difference in religion. In the modern world, freedom of religion is considered by many people and most of the nations to be a fundamental human right. However, there is still a huge number of people that are willing to fight for what they believe in and only what they believe in and do not welcome the beliefs and faiths of others. While most countries provide for the protection of religious freedom in their constitutions or laws, only a quarter of those countries were found to fully respect these legal rights in practice. If there was freedom of religion worldwide, this would definitely lessen the acts of violence and terrorism anywhere. More acceptance equals peace. Which leads us to our second law. Number two, ban violence in any form. This one needs no further explanation. Violence in any form should never be acceptable, and we cannot stress this enough. Violence is influenced by so many things, and one of the biggest, if not the biggest factor of violence, is exposure to the violence itself. This usually goes back to a person's childhood. Exposure to violence creates a chain. Studies show that a person who was exposed to violence at an early age may experience behavioral problems, depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Children exposed to violence may also show increased signs of aggression. People who experience several types of violence over long periods of time are more likely to experience anxiety, depression, and behavioral problems compared to children with only moderate exposure to violence. Violence is a recurring problem today and will continue on until a law that bans violence in any form will be passed. Number 3. Eliminate Nukes and Chemical Weapons if you're not really into reading papers or getting updated on current affairs, you may not realize how this affects you. Nuclear weapons are intrinsically dangerous, 
and pose an unparalleled threat to the very existence of humankind. They do not enhance a country's security, but rather imperil the survival of all nations. They should be banned because they are immoral and probably illegal tools of destruction. Since their use would likely be fatal for all, they cannot even be considered instruments of war. We hate to be the bearer of bad news, but as of 2020, humanity has lost about 13,410 nuclear weapons, thousands of which are on hair trigger alert. This means it could blow at any time. We're afraid duck and cover won't help you. Number four, no bullying. Now, this is a serious issue to this day. Bullying is unwanted, aggressive behavior among school-aged children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. The behavior is repeated or has the potential to be repeated over time. Both kids who are bullied and who bully others may have serious lasting problems. Bullying can affect everyone, those who are bullied, those who bully, and those who witness bullying. Bullying is linked to many negative outcomes, including impacts on mental health, substance use, and suicide. It is important to talk to kids to determine whether bullying or something else is a concern. Media reports often link bullying with suicide. However, most youth who are bullied do not have thoughts of suicide or engage in suicidal behaviors. Bullying can be prevented, especially when the power of a community is brought together. Community-wide strategies can help identify and support children who are bullied, redirect the behavior of children who bully, and change the attitudes of adults and youth who tolerate bullying behaviors in peer groups, schools, and communities. A law that says no to bullying will also have a strong contribution to the seize of any form of violence. So we're keeping all fingers crossed for someone brave enough to pass this law for good, if there isn't any yet. Number five, strengthening the healthcare system. Now, this is a very timely and relevant nowadays. In the world where the evolution of technology is on the peak, medical science is also seeing innumerable advances. But when it comes to addressing patient needs, ensuring patient safety, the efficiency of the system and quality improvement, healthcare performs, far below acceptable levels. No, we're not quite there yet. Passing a law that strengthens the healthcare system in terms of treatment, prevention, and research is important if we want to avoid another pandemic that overwhelms our current healthcare system. We have already seen what happens if something like COVID-19 occurs again. Once the healthcare system crashes again, the economy goes along with it. And let's face it, this experience is not much fun. Job loss, closures of businesses, recession, you get it. Investing in healthcare treatment, prevention, and research should come as a top priority now that we've experienced what a pandemic could do to our economy, especially now that we know how much it sucks. Well, there you have it. Now, these are just laws that we would pass if given the opportunity. We're curious to know which one of these laws would you choose if you had the chance to make it and everyone had to obey it. Did you have something different in mind? Tell us in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, like, comment, and subscribe.